I guess I'm recording. Okay. Hey everyone. There I am. I did a whole fun section about how I did this and that and I accidentally hit the wrong button. <laughs> so that's gone. Anyway, I'm using KS Resin. I decided to do an art piece on video. Um, I have a lot of people asking me to do it, so I thought I would. Um, I use KS Resin for my resin. I use the Ultra Art Coat. Um, I am an affiliate. I love this resin. Um, it's free shipping, and I am an affiliate, and down below you will find a link, uh, my link. Use code RESINISTA with a capital R, and you'll get a 5% discount. All right, so that was my resin I used. Okay, what I do when I mix my resin up is I have not ever gotten the one-to-one -one on that little cup thing. And even when I met Erica from Artist Till Death in person, I, <laughs> I still didn't get it. All right, so what I do is I go ahead and measure whatever milliliters I need, and then I divide it down. Milliliters metrics are a lot easier than ounces. And I'll go ahead and measure it out of my cup, make my marks, and I will mix my resin up for three minutes, and it's a one-to-one -one ratio. All right, these are my colors. Oh boy, I gotta go through this again. I use, I'm using Just Resin products today for my pigments, and this is Ultraviolet. Beautiful color, one of my favorites, and this is it here. Look at that color, look at that, it's beautiful. Okay, my up next color is Just Resin, um, Turquoise Luster. And that is this color right here. Beautiful, beautiful color. Okay, my next color is Just Resin Breakfast at Tiffany's. This is not a luster, this is a just a solid color. And this is what it looks like. It's always good to mix in solid colors with your luster colors or your glittery colors, shiny colors, anything like that. Okay, and it just makes for a more balanced piece. This is Just Resin Bright Gold Powder, and with Bright Gold Powder and any mica powders, I will always overload it into my resin because it tends to want to separate and spread out. So when you overload, especially with this gold, when you overload it and you hit it with the heat, some of it will float on top and it's a really pretty effect. And then because I haven't had a chance to get the Color Passion colors yet from Artist Till Death, um, I'm using Rust-Oleum White Enamel. And I've mixed in Lares Angel White and it'll just brighten it up just a tiny bit. This will be placed underneath my other colors so that I can get some cell action when I swipe it. Um, one other thing that I wanna say before I really get started, this was just a uh, birch round. I do tape my art pieces on the back so that it's easier to clean up. It's just for me. If you don't wanna do that, you can hit it with a heat gun and the heat gun scraper attachment and you can get it off, you can sand it. But just for me, I used to do this, this little extra step. And on all unfinished raw wood, you must prime it. I put on three coats of gesso that I roll on and I sand between each layer. And then I top it off with a spray paint, a white matte spray paint, just a Rust-Oleum paint. Okay, I also wanna say one other thing before I really start. I get the majority of my supplies from Artist Till Death. They have a website, I will link them below, um, artisttilldeath.com. They are your one-stop resin shop. They have pigments, glitters, substrates. They also sell stone coat resin there. Um, they have other items. They have um, the, this geode right here. I don't know if you can see it. Nope, you can't. Okay, hold up. You're gonna see it now. I did this. This is an acrylic form that I purchased from Artist Till Death. And I did that as a geode because that's what it is. So there you go. They have everything you need. They have stirring sticks. They also have a lot of swag. But on top of that, they sell their art on their website. Um, they are starting up classes again so that 
um, in person and I'm telling you it is worth it I took it last year in Bradenton Florida and um, even though I wasn't a beginner I got a lot of tips in person and just hands-on help with things and it really improved my technique quite a bit aside from meeting Jeff and Erica which I had a blast for those two days we just really partied it up it was great fun so anyway if you're thinking about doing resin and you should check out Artist Till Death YouTube because they've taught me a lot of what I know along with a lot of other people on artists that do resin art. Um, just so many, just so many um, that I follow and check their videos. There's also a lot of beautiful acrylic artists on, on YouTube that I learn a lot of techniques to do acrylic pours with. And I always finish off my acrylic pours with resin and my signature glitter. Okay, so here we go. I've got, I've left a little bit, and I'm gonna do negative space, and the important thing about negative space, and I've done it so many times, where I'm gonna make a negative space, and all of a sudden, oh, wow, I put too much color. No more negative space. So we're gonna really try this here. Oops, it was a hair. So what I do first, and is I will take and pour onto my surface clear resin. I will mix up most of my resin, but I always will leave a little bit on so that I can do this first. This will help the colors to spread. This will help, it'll, it'll make a floating effect on top of the resin. All right, one of the things you're gonna need is a torch. Now here's a little trick I learned from Dar's Ford. Whenever you're using your torch or your heat gun, um, always point it away for a couple of seconds and any dust that might have accumulated on it will go and burn off rather than on your surface. So I'm going to hit it with a little heat and that makes it more spreadable and I will spread this out over the entire board. It's a very little bit, it's not very much but it will help that resin flow once I start. Oh, look at that, I had color on my finger. Okay, we gotta fix that. All right. Now here, here's something else. You know, resin is very messy to work with, but God, I love the way it feels under my finger. Oh, yes, yes. Okay, that's me, I'm sick. All right, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, I've got this all spread out. Resin is quite forgiving, and here's why. Now, I also want to put it along the edges, so let me just spread this out on the edges. And catch all those edges. We want to coat them all with resin because a lot of this will not go off the board. Now, I'm hoping maybe some of it will pour off because I do like it coming off the edge. All right. Oh, look at that. Yes, I love my cats, but not on my pieces. Okay. Now, oh, there's another hair. What the frig? You know, I keep my room closed so this doesn't happen, but obviously it has. So, got to get the shit out. Oops, I cussed. Come on. All right, you're not doing it. I do not know how this happened. This is not part of the plan. I got to get it off though. Got to, got to. Let me get my poker. Okay. That's so important when you're dealing with resin. The biggest thing is trash in your resin, cat hairs, human hairs, and all of that. Okay. We're looking good now, pretty good. All right. Now, one thing about resin, and I said it just a minute ago, is that it's very forgiving in that, you know, I really didn't want this blue right here. So, what I need to do for this, and it was on my glove, you know, it's the common error. What I will do, I will make sure that I turn this board and that's a really another big deal is levelness. Your resin, 
Whatever you're resining it really needs to be level. Okay. Gotta wipe my hands off. Yeah, and this is another thing you're gonna go through. Paper towels, rags, whatever. You will need alcohol, whoops. You will need alcohol, <laughs> I can not mess. Okay, you will need alcohol. And since the pandemic, 91% alcohol has been really hard to find. Um, I happen to find, found the, whatever, the 70%, and it takes a little more rubbing, but I can get the resin off my gloves with effort, a little more effort than 91%. Okay, I'm hitting it with heat again before I start my colors. And I really don't want to waste another set of gloves. Oh, God. Why? Why with all the hairs? God. The frig. I use a lot of bamboo skewers. They really help. All right, now what color I'll be doing first is I'm laying down the white first because I want cell action. So I will take my white and there's my boo-boo. We're gonna cover that up, but I'm gonna take it and run it across. One thing I have found, sometimes if I am more random in what I am doing, I have a, a better result and to not worry about, oh, I'm laying the colors down. Let me think carefully. No, I try to be random about it. I think it's better. All right, my next color. I'm gonna go along with this purple. Wait, do you see this stuff spread out? You see already? I see. I'm gonna have to be careful because I feel like already I'm getting too much color. And we'll see. All right. And now here is my turquoise luster. I'm gonna lay it alongside the purple. And then I'm gonna take my breakfast at Tiffany's and I'm gonna put it alongside the turquoise luster. And already I've seen, I already got too much. I got too much color, but we'll work it out. And then I'm gonna take my gold. Gold is something you have to be careful because if you use too much of it, it will tend to take over. So just a little bit of gold. I might use a little of that later. And now I am going to add a little more white so that I can flow this over. This had more white, but I'm gonna put some more here too. White isn't gonna hurt. And with this white underneath, it creates that floating effect that's really pretty. Okay, got my colors down. I'm gonna hit it with my torch real fast. All right, that's good enough. All right. Now what I use for swipey papers I take my parchment paper and I will use that to swipe with. Um, and I also like to rip them. I don't like hard edges. So I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna rip it again. Smaller is easier to handle. And I'm gonna take it, because it's curly, I'm gonna take it like this. Now you take it and you get a pencil width thick of your color and you take it and go very slowly. And while you're doing it, you want to turn it. There, that one's done. Can't use it no more. All right. Now this one is a smaller one. So I'm gonna take this and go like this. And we're gonna, we're gonna drag it through. Drag it through the collar and then twist it off. All right, that's that one. All right, now this one. 
I'm gonna turn my board. No, I'm not. I'm gonna take this and we're gonna push this through here. And off. And you can see my board is filling up. It was not my intention. However it turns out, it turns out. It will be beautiful. I know it. All right. So this, we're going to take this. I'm using the pointed end of this. And I will go like this. Okay. All right. Now, this one. this and like I said I, I'm trying not I'm trying to have some negative space but we'll see okay. yes you use a lot of stuff all the time and this will go here I'm really hoping this comes out good because I'd really like to show this video but if it doesn't then I'm not. Okay, now this one. Oops. I'm going to tear this off. And we're just going to take this and run it this way. Alright. Alright. Okay, what do we got? Okay, let me see this little bit of gold here. Turn it like that. Move this through here. Okay. Sometimes a light touch is the best when you're dealing with this. And actually, I'm going to take this and I'm going to just hit it here and go again. All right. Now, I will take my heat gun to it. See what we get. Hoping. Here I see empty spot. I think the biggest thing in dealing with resin is a lot of people are they fear it. They they just like they're afraid. I know the stuff is expensive, but you really you know, just dive into it. Just do it. It's you know, it's not that scary. It, it's you know, it's the medium is wonderful. I mean, how things work out with it. It's so pretty. Okay, now I am starting to see some cell action. I'm really happy about that. Okay, now I might do a little tilt here. I have an awful lot of color left. Ooh, I might do something with that, but we'll see. Now I'm going to run a couple of ribbons through. I see some cells popping up already, which is great. And this is another thing where you put the ribbons through. And I'm going to run one right here. When you're doing ribbons, you must do it fast. Don't hesitate. Just run it through it. And like here. Oops, that didn't work out. Okay, we'll do it again.
Okay, you. Not getting enough on there. And that's it. All right, now let me hit it once more. My cells are popping. What I also do is I hit these ribbons with some heat. And as you hit it with heat, it starts floating. So, there you have it. Let me take this off, and then I'm going to run you down over it. Let's see a couple places here. And this, what's that about? But, oh well. And you'll be able to see what I'm talking about with the float. I don't want to do this with my gloves on. Then i got to figure out what to do with the rest of this resin. I'll do something with it. Okay. All right, here we go. Now, oh boy, how do I get to, I guess I can't do it. All right, well, I'll just, uh, and I can't flip it. Bummer. Okay, let's see if you can see it. So you're going to get a bunch of shadows. I'm pretty sure. All right, I'll probably end up cutting this. You won't see this part, that's for sure. Anyway. Maybe you will see it because I can't say bye. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, like, and hit the bell. Thank you.